Yeah, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, sometimes your boy. And now we're back with the press conference about the naval base. And we're going to keep you updated until they keep us updated. And all condolences to the families. And this shit is crazy. Let's get to the footage. Recover from this day. And if you don't believe me, let me give you a David Morgan test. In two weeks' time, remember the names of who was wounded and killed here today. And you won't. You won't. But if today was a member of your family that was wounded or killed today, this day will be etched in your memory for the rest of your life. That's what the families of the Navy personnel are dealing with today. They need your prayers. They need your comfort. And that's why this morning I asked for your assistance in helping us deal with this case. We're going to get there. Give us a little bit of time and we'll provide all of the answers that we can for you. You can be proud of your community, you can be proud of your Navy. Thank God for the United States of America. Thank you. I'll like that. Mayor. Thank you. Governor, thank you so much for being here and as part of that. And I just want to say out to all of our, our uh, Scamie County residents, City of Pensacola, how grateful we are that you've, you're, you're here. We've certainly gotten calls uh, from our congressmen, our senators, uh, and even the White House, and certainly they have expressed anything that they can do for our community they are willing to do, and so we very much appreciate that. Uh, this is a tragic day for the City of Pensacola. Again, uh, I think the world of our, our base commander here, uh, Tim, uh, Captain Kinsella, who, who always says that as goes the base, so goes the town, and as goes the town, so goes the base. Uh, there's a deep affinity and relationship between Pensacola NAS and the city of Pensacola and, and certainly the men and women that work here and, and serve our country every day. This is a sad day, but I think some of the things that were said there that you've heard, uh, this is also a community of great resiliency. And I'm, I'm confident that both NAS and the city of Pensacola will bounce back from this day and be stronger uh, as we go through. Uh, but again, I'm certainly here um, in support of everyone and certainly want to thank all of our first responders, especially those of Scambia County Sheriff's Deputy that got here and took care of uh, neutralizing the threat um, and certainly all of our Pensacola police officers that were here assisting uh, we had EMS from uh, Scambia County as well as fire and rescue from both the Scambia County and the city of Pensacola we certainly, uh, all of our first responders uh, and what they do every day to keep us protected, you never know when you're going to have a day uh, like December 6th so again, uh, thank you to all those individuals who serve us every day and take care of us, uh, that's which the professionalism you can expect from the City of Pensacola and Escambia County, and we certainly appreciate all of all those who've come. The governor, uh, everyone else, uh, the state of Florida has reached out to us all across the state, and uh, we appreciate all of your thoughts and prayers. Uh, please continue to keep thinking about Pensacola and AS and the people there, and we will bounce back from this. Thank you. I think we have time, myself or some of the others, if there's any questions. Governor, as a former member of the Navy Jet Corps. Um, former officer who served in the Middle East. How would you expect this investigation to play out? Well, I think that uh, I think the FBI um, is probably going to brief you guys in due time, and I think they're they're leading for it. But but obviously, you know, when you have a foreign national involved, um, you know, particularly in that part of the world, the investigation is obviously going to be different than if it were just somebody from a local community. And um, and I think you'll see that as things go on. Yeah, or can you maybe help people understand the background nature of what this training program is and why someone from Saudi Arabia was trained here? Uh, yeah, I'll let the captain if he wants to weigh in on that. Um, we have the uh, international training service. We have students from, from several different countries that come here. Uh, they learn aviation. They become naval aviators while they're here. Uh, but something we've been doing for quite a while is with our partner nations. It's, uh, it, it's important. Um, but that cross pollination, that cross training that we do with our allies is, is something that's, that we've done for a long time. I mean, in World War II, we had Royal Air Force folks that were training here. There's always been international students uh, training here because it's a good place to train. It's good quality training. Um, so, How many students do you have international students? Um, I, I can't speak to the exact number of, of international students. Roughly? Uh, a couple hundred. What was he training yeah. to do, sir? Say again? What was he training to do? Um... He was, he was just in the aviation pipeline, so we could say he was, he was training in aviation. And after, at the time of the shooting, the suspect was a member of the Saudi Arabian Air Force? I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to get into that. Uh, that's, that's up to the FBI to complete their investigation to, to see exactly. It would be speculation on my part to, uh, to see. Well, what's he in the pipeline? Um, again, I'm not going to speak to where he was in the pipeline or, or his exact training right now. That's, I'll, I'll leave that. 
Was he authorized to have a gun on base? Uh, weapons are not authorized on base. You can't you can't bring a weapon on base so unless you're you're. Can you talk a bit about security measures? I think that was mm -hmm. one of the biggest questions. What types of measures are in place to keep something like this from happening? Yeah, um, that's, that's something that's difficult for me to speak here because our security measures, well, they're, they're we keep them to ourselves for a reason. If I, if I talk to you about our security measures, but I will say that we practice to this. This is part of our training, um, our, uh, our master of arms and our civilian DOD, uh, along with Escambia County and, and uh, Sheriff's Department and with Pensacola Police Department. We train to active shooter scenarios regularly. We just did one recently. Um, so this is, um, we never expect it, but we train for it. And we remain ever vigilant for it. Do you expect there's going to be more changes to Again, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to speculate. Yeah, I'm not going to speculate. Were you confident that he was acting alone? I'm not going to speculate on the particulars of the uh, uh, of the investigation or exactly what, what happened. No, uh, yeah, you're you're talking about the, uh, this is an act of, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, so you talk about the heroism of your deputies, how, you know, their training prepared them in the quality of their character. They rushed in when a lot of people would not do so and, and risked their lives for that. I thought you'd like a chance to talk about that. I appreciate that. We've been to the hospital, of course, to see the officers and their families. Uh, and to uh, kind of reinforce what Captain Kinsella just said, we do active shooter training. It's both on-site training and also uh, computer simulations that we train with the DOD police and the Master of Arms program in the Navy. And so this was an actual example of where all that training comes into being. Now, how do we react to this and how do we co coordinate and communicate with each other? And so, you know, unfortunately that training was put to the test today. Uh, I'll tell you, it's hard to speak to that without tearing up. I could not be prouder of the men and women of the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. Yeah. They ran to the fight, not from the fight. And even though they knew there was an active shooter, and again, the chances of putting your life in danger are great, guess where they went? They went inside. So let me tell you, the best of our community was on scene today, and that's why it turned out the way it did. Sheriff, sure. as you just, time has gone on, you've learned more about what happened. You've walked us through... What happened to that? Yeah, well, just very briefly, you know, we have a precinct not too far off the base. You know, thank God the call came in. We had uh, officers that were available. It was about a three to five minute response. The call came in at 10 minutes to seven this morning. Uh, I won't get into a lot of specifics on that because of the FBI investigation. And here's, let me explain why we don't do that, folks. There's a whole lot of witnesses out there that are listening to these programs. Mm -hmm. They're on social media texting each other. The worst thing in law enforcement that can happen to you is for me to get a second, third, and fourth-hand story from an eyewitness, from someone who was there who has a clear understanding of what occurred this morning, but now they're reading all the texts that they've sent people and people have sent back to them and what they see on the television tonight. And so that memory, which is very distinct right now, becomes clouded. And now we've begun to tell a blended story. It wasn't really what I observed. It's what you observed and I observed, and now we shared it with 10 other people. So we want to be very careful with that. And that's why I really think as Captain Kinsella told you, unfortunately, many times, we don't want to get into that because if you were a witness, I would want to know where you were at in the building, what time you were there, where did you hear the first shot, you know, what did you do, was your actions there, did you ever get eyes on the shooter, etc.? did you help evacuate the building. Those are things that are critical for developing timelines, even to the point of angles of trajectory where students are running from. And I, I appreciate that. I just wonder if there's been some facts that have already been established. That we, that the, the, the facts have been established that, that we have, unfortunately, now four dead, eight injured. What type of weapon? Uh, it was a handgun. Are you able to address whether or not the shooter's room was raided? I, I will not. Was his name Muhammad al Sharami? I will not confirm that. And, folks... I know the answers to your questions. I am not answering or confirming it, not because I'm attempting to be trite. It's because I am not the cognizant authority for this investigation. What that means is the FBI, the ATF, and uh, NCIS on base are the lead agencies on this. We are a support element. And so while I have the answer to your questions, I am not at liberty to answer them. Are you missing uh, 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 I'm a little confused. I think this morning... We, we now have an additional person. Additional person. Yes. 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 Hey, folks, my name is I'm Jason Burst, the Public Affairs Office of Green Station. We're going to stop the press conference right now. Yes. We have more information will come out later. We'll be sure to share those with everybody. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I observed is that a lot of people that were asking questions are trying to find out if, if they were um, 
what do you call them people um international students because they think it's somebody from Saudi Arabia that they trained over here again kind of like bin Laden and then they came and shot him up so they hinting towards that if they ask some questions that's my um theory of why they ain't answering them shit because they know they always gonna go for that because we like to bring people from overseas to get their money and so that they can benefit what we're doing over here in our country. But then they learn from us and use it against us. That's another reason why in Korea they don't they don't let out outside people in. They don't let outside media in. They don't let media go out that they don't want to go out because that's giving up your secrets, letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But at the end, none of all that shit matters because people are dead and people are hurt. Did they kill the shooter? I think so. Or did they lock him up? Either way. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep you updated when they keep me updated. It's your girl, some touch of boy, Charlotte Carolina. Y'all know my slogan, whatever. We out.